thank you all for coming out uh, this evening um, under these circumstances. Uh, my name is Aramik Glass Blake, um, the director of Generation Justice, and I stand here with family and friends of Mr. Cannon and community. Um, and so today I'm going to ask two questions and then I'm going to pass it over to the girlfriend of Mr. Cannon and she will introduce herself and she will give you factual information. And then we'll, we'll talk to his mother and two of the leaders um, in our community. Um, and so my question for Chief Neslite, if there has not been an investigation, how did you already form an opinion? You caught this young man dangerous and you called him a criminal, but you also said you believe in due process, but you gave your own opinion without due process. And so that is my question. As you guys listen to the facts, as you guys seen his videos, which were only a couple of seconds as well, um, the full context, she was there and she will give you that context. My name is Shakira Smith, S-H-A-K-I-R-A -A Smith. On May 7th, around 7.20, I was in the car with friends and my boyfriend. We got on the freeway at H Street and the sirens came on. At that point, I looked back and recognized that they were the gang supervision unit's cars. Soon after, there were three cars surrounding us and the driver pulled over. Myself and Trinell were sitting in the back of a two-door vehicle. Officers are surrounding our car with their guns drawn. As Trinell opens the door, he is quickly pulled out of the vehicle by his shirt, head first, throwing him down to the ground aggressively. At that point, officers dogpile him. Six, six officers are holding down every limb of his body. At least two officers began throwing punches and choking him, as you see in the, the video. I began to scream, asking, why are you beating him? I then pulled out my phone and began to record witnessing them continuously brutalizing him and punching him. As they see me recording, they pointed their guns out at me and, st and started saying, put your phone away, you can't do that. They called me the B word and other things that I do not wish to repeat. I'm only 18 years old. This was the most traumatizing experience of my life. They have handcuffed me immediately and put me in the back of a police car. As I'm crying, I'm sitting in the back of the police car completely in shock after seeing Trinell brutalized. I asked several of the officers who came to my car that I was in, like the back seat. Um, I asked, why would you allow those officers to punch and choke Trinell? The same officer that you see in the video letting this happen told me that nothing happened and that he wasn't present at the time of the assault. Time has passed and at some point, the same officer who participated in punching Trinell drove off with him. Trinell was unarmed and nonviolent. I just want all these officers to be held accountable for their actions. Thank you. We'll hold questions for the aid. My name is Leticia Bates and I'm the mother of Trinell Cannon and this is just the worst situation that I can be in right now with getting the phone call that I received about the situation. Just, I just want the facts to be pointed out about the situation. There was some footage and statements by the San Diego Police Department that were also put out today. And I just want to make sure that everybody is paying attention to the footage clearly because there are some statements that were made as far as my son um, tried to restrain and also he tried to flee at the time. But if you closely look closely to the helicopter footage, you can see that he was pulled and yanked to the area to where he was. So. Um, the thing that we're looking at is the brutal abuse that was caused to my son, Trinell Cannon, and I want justice for my son. <laughs> because no child should have to go through this and deal with the police in such a manner. And it doesn't matter, I feel like, if they're in a uniform or not, they need to be held accountable. I'm Bishop Cornelius Bowser, C-O-R-N-E-L-I-U-S-B-O-W-S-E-R. And um, I also saw the video footage of the, um, the, the incident. And based on the narrative that we heard from Chief um, Nislight, 
uh, I'm getting totally two different versions. I'm wondering what did he see? Uh, this is, demonstrates that Chief Nislight is unable to lead the San Diego Police Department and most definitely either the mayor needs to get him some tra more training, which he already should have that, or get us a new chief. I know Trinnell on a personal level. I know his mom, Leticia, his, his, his grandmother and his great-grandmother, who was a good friend of mine for years and years and years and years, cousins and, and so on. So I know the family very well. I mentor Trinnell. Trinnell has a beautiful spirit. He's a nice young man. He's not violent. He's not dangerous or any of those type of things. And we wish that the police department quit doing that, especially to the black community, the way he, the way Chief Nislight framed the narrative, because he wants people to believe that, oh, he deserved what he got. He did not deserve what he got. And, 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 and if you can take safely in a person that goes into a worship center and shoot and kill people and take them in safely without punching them and hitting them, you most definitely could have took him in safely. Mm -hmm. And so we have a problem with that. And we're calling, I'm calling for uh, a, an uh, external investigation or an independent investigation, not the DA's office, uh, but someone from the state or the federal to come in and investigate because as uh, Mika, Eric Meek said, how can he said there's going to be a fair and impartial investigation when he's already arrived to a conclusion. Right. We don't trust the process now. He, he terminated that. You're talking about the, the poison, the fruit from the tree. This, that, that he poisoned that tree. And so we most definitely need an independent investigation. I'm here. I'm, uh, I support the, the family in every way. I want the family to know that we're praying with you all and we have your back. And we want this to stop in our community. They need to get rid of the gang unit. I've been calling for this for about two years, year and a half. And they need to get rid of it because this is what we get all the time. We got this on camera, but you don't see all the stuff that happens in our community with law enforcement and the gang unit. They have to go. Chief Nislight used to be a lieutenant of the gang unit and a captain of the gang unit. He's protecting them. Yeah. Right. So he's got to go. Yeah. Thank you, Bishop Bowser. My name is Minister Abdul Waliullah Muhammad, formerly known as Hugh Muhammad. I'm the local representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam. Around 6, 6.30 last night, I received a call from Trinnell's mom concerned about what had happened to her son in Chula Vista. I then got on the phone and called the Chula Vista Police Department, spoke with the watch commander. They told me it was not them that had Trinnell in custody. I then called Chief Nethlight directly myself and asked him to look into this because I was concerned. Number one, when I saw the video um, and the blows that the young man was taking, knowing that recently there had been two in custody police death, one in National City and one here in San Diego, I was very concerned for the health of the young man. So I wanted first and foremost for that to be looked at to make sure he was okay and nothing would happen to him if he'd been not taken to the hospital. As time progressed um, and we fast forward, I will not go into some of the other things that transpired, I'll do that at a later date. I'm very concerned with the narrative that was put out. From what was told to me by Trinnell's uh, girlfriend that was with him, is that Trinnell was being dragged out the car. So the video that we saw that was shown that as if Trinnell was attacking the police officer was the young man being dragged and in being dragged reached out to grab onto something. At that time, the police officer fell backward from what I can see. At that point, the other officers come on. As I've said to the police chief and I've said to every law enforcement, I'm very objective and open. Well, what I, since you've released some of the footage, we want the rest of the footage. Right. We do not just want the footage that showed that part of it. Let's show the body worn cameras of the other officers that were there that we could put all of this out in the public. If justice is to be served, I believe this was a rush to judgment. Mm -hmm. I believe we should have waited until a thorough investigation was taking, uh, taking part. And I'm very concerned at this point, after my interaction last night with the investigators from IA, can they actually do a fair and impartial investigation? I do not have that trust at this point. And I, like Pastor Bowser, would like to see an independent investigation. I want to see the Civilian Review Board investigate it, but I'm, if they do not come up with correct findings, it needs to go to the state. This time, what we see as we're dealing with AB 392, the bill that Dr. Shirley Weber have put forth with excessive force, and the whole idea behind what is uh, what they call uh, reasonable force versus what is necessary force. Right. There's reasonable force to take someone into custody, but what I saw in that video, you still have to show me where that was necessary. Yeah. I saw continuous punching. I saw actually one officer get up and then put his foot back down into the back or the head of the young man. And I heard what was to me most discouraging and despair, where's my little sister? What happened to her with the names 
that was being called. She was called the B word. And then somebody said to her, she better be quiet before we slap the what, what, what out of her. Let's not forget that the Supreme Court have already ruled on one taken video in any city of a crime, it is allowed. The police do not have any right to tell anyone to put their camera away and to stop them from videoing what's going on. If you don't want to be filmed, don't do wrong. So we're calling from the San Diego Police Department, the city of San Diego, to have an inve independent investigation. And also we're calling to see the rest of the footage. You show us one part of the footage, and since you've already showed us some, we want to see the rest of it. And that's what we're asking for from Chief Nethlight at this point. Let's produce the rest of that video and the other officers that were there. My heart goes out to the family. I know the family well. I know Trinnell. And I've met others in the family that I've known for a while. Like Bishop Bowser, I also, with Travis from Gladiator School of Martial Arts and Boxing, have worked with Trinnell. And while he's had some issues, there was not war. There was a warrant for uh, uh, Trinnell out. There was uh, allegations of a, a gun charge. Um, that still does not allow you to mistreat an individual because they have broken the law. And that is the part that I do not appreciate. We understand justice, fairness, and we know if you pay, if you do the crime, you need to pay the time. The realization is that treatment was inhumane and should not have happened to any human being. We want a full and complete investigation, and we want the a complete footage of the body cameras released. And we want the CRB uh, to be the first independent investigation. But if that doesn't go well, we need the state to come in and investigate this. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to my yes, dear sir. sister. Thank you. So for the request of the family, no questions. Um, and we're going to leave it at that. But thank you guys for coming out. And if you look like you have something to say. <laughs> thank you, guys.